Hello and welcome back to the Inside EVs YouTube channel. You join me with the Audi e-tron for another one of our famous highway range tests. We run all these range tests from 100% down to where the car won't move anymore at 70 miles per hour constant on the highway, or at least as most as we can. We're about a little less than a mile off the highway and then it's 70 miles an hour till she's dead. I'll tell you a little bit more about it after our intro. Here we go. Behind me is the car that we will be range testing. It is a 2019 Audi e-tron with the 21 inch wheels. This is about as many options as you can get. It is the prestige model, it has the massaging air conditioned seats, all of which we won't be using for our range test and the 21 inch wheels will not help. We will also be testing an e-tron in the future as soon as we can secure one on the aero wheels that should help even more. Now, I've always found it interesting, but Volkswagen Audi Group products that are run through EPA always do really well on highway range tests, such as Taycan. So, will this exceed the 200 miles EPA? I think it's like 204 EPA. I don't know. We'll see. It's a heavy car. It's like 55, 5,700 pounds. It's got a big battery. It's about 86 kilowatt hour usable, maybe a little more. And we are charging it up here at Electrify America to 100%. Now, one of the reasons that I'm charging it up here is I wanted the battery to be warm. Sorry for the silly ice cars making noise over there. What I wanted was to have everything warmed up, ready to go, because uh, it is a little bit chilly outside. It's about 70 degrees we, in the south, that's chilly. And what we're going to do is we're gonna put the car in eco mode, set the cruise at 70, and we always run air conditioning for our tests, mainly so we're comfortable, but also every car, you know, HVAC plays into the efficiency quite a bit. So we are going to run until it completes charging at 100%, which in an e-tron is so nice. Audi has such a big buffer at the top of the battery that it's still doing 50 plus kilowatt by the time it says, yep, I'm done at 100%. So we're going to go until it stops charging, only just maybe 10 more minutes. I plugged in at 61%. We're already at 87, just like that. That's what you get with a great charging curve like this car. We're gonna jump in, cruise control at 70, and uh, we're gonna go down the highway and we're gonna end back here right when the car can't move anymore. So let's go do it. Now, some of you may find this interesting. Here at Electrify America, I'm paying 31 cents. Oh, I just clicked stop. Dang, I gotta restart the charging session and then I'll tell you about the pricing. All right, I will not inadvertently hit the screen this time. We are back to charging. What I was saying was, since I pay $4 a month for Electrify America Pass Plus, I buy down the per kilowatt hour rate uh, from 42 cents, I believe, down to 31 cents a kilowatt hour, which certainly helps charging up this e-tron. Now the breakover, my colleague Tom, who you all know, uh, he, he uh, did the math and you need to pull about 33 kilowatt hours throughout the entire month to make up for that $4 difference. So if you plan on charging for on Electrify America, just get the Pass Plus membership. It pays for itself with one charging session on most cars, unless it's like a Mini Cooper SE. Uh, with that said, look at this e-tron, 74 kilowatts at 92%. We're gonna go all the way to 100%. We're going to obviously use the headlights that won't use too much juice. They are LEDs, no seat massagers. I do have my girlfriend Alyssa with me, but she's just gonna be chilling there. It doesn't really affect range too much. And uh, that's about that. Efficient setting will also lower the air suspension like you see now, so it's not sitting high up like it is in comfort. And there goes a Model 3 getting a wash. Pretty cool. I wonder if he has a Chatamo adapter to charge on Electrify America. One of the nice things about the e-tron is it shows you all of the stats while charging. A lot of people don't know this. They just drive normally. But if you click this view button while charging, you get all of these cool stats. So it'll tell you your uh, uh, your battery state of charge percentage, the time that it expects for you to complete charging, your time to 100% state of charge or whatever you have it set to. In the settings here, you can actually charge the car to less than what you want, basically, to preserve battery life. You can set your target down to you know 50 to 100% in 10% increments. Uh, this is your miles of charge based off of the guessometer, the GOM, 
and then of course your kilowatt input. The kilowatt's what really matters here. The gum does is not very reflective of what we're going to get. I just had this car on the racetrack filming some one laps. We had it ripping around, so this is going to predict a lot less than we're going to actually get on the highway. And so that's why I prefer a rated range calculation so I can do the math, but I certainly understand the argument for a guesso meter like this car. Uh, all it is is it's looking at your previous driving history, seeing how much batteries in the battery pack, and then predicting the range off of that. But it does not do future prediction. Currently, there's no great system unless you put in where you're going in the navigation, which this car does a pretty good job at. Still, look at this, 57 kilowatt at 98%. That's pretty amazing, but of course the downside is there's a lot of energy at the top of the pack that we're not able to use because of that buffer. And before we set off in efficiency mode, going from 100% back to here at zero, we're going on pretty much flat elevation. Uh, we should talk about the temperature. How do we see what, oh, it's 73 degrees outside, no wind at all, perfect conditions. How far do you think the e-tron will go? 198. 198 miles. So you think it'll get very close to its EPA rated range. Mm -hmm. I tend to agree. I think we're going to see in that, that 190 ish range. It's got a big battery. It's very thirsty though. And, um, one of the things that, that this car has is quite a few miles is 13,000 miles, but I believe our usable battery capacity is about the same because when you degrade the battery, it eats into that hidden buffer. So we should get the same exact battery capacity now usable than when the car was brand new off the line. Plus 13,000 miles, it's really not that hard on a car anyway. So it'll be kind of interesting. Tire pressures, we're just set to manufacturer settings. This is going to be a fun one. We've been wanting to test an e-tron for a while. We just hit 100. Yeah, we just hit 100% state of charge and it just completed charging. Let's go. All right, we just completed charging. How we get the charge port done is we click this little button. This will go white or it'll just turn off. We can pull it up. Watch this. Look at how cool this charge port is. It's just going to fly up on its own. Love that. And, uh, these are the new Signet Electrify America units. They were just replaced because of those buggy FSEC units that didn't work well. They put in the new Signets, working great. We better get on the road though. Let's jump in and do the 70 mile per hour range test. All right, here we go. Turn it on the e-tron. Battery charges at 100%. Front passenger airbag is on. Let me adjust the steering wheel position. And we're in the reverse. We are in efficiency mode already. Awesome 360 degree cameras to help us backing out. We're going to go air conditioning eco at 74 degrees. Just something pretty basic is what we normally do. Let me reset our uh, short term memories. Trip computer. Reset values with OK. We've reset. And just in case we're at 13,303 miles on the car and uh let's go see how it does the highway's right up here we're gonna jump on the highway go down a little bit of a different route today i found one that's uh gonna be less traffic so we have less uh, wind advantage with cars pushing traffic out of the way or wind out of the way i should say and it's going to be a flatter elevation so should be a nice and simple road trip we're gonna run low beams no high beams no fog lights um, again that won't make a huge difference here and we have the air conditioning in the eco setting, as you can see here on the screen. All right, merging onto the highway that we'll be doing the range test on. We're gonna go up and over this little overpass. We're gonna get it to 70 miles per hour. I'm gonna pull back on this stock to lock in 70. There we go. And I'm going to select this button. And we're still getting used to everything. Here we go. Then that's steering. We'll put our distance to the closest. Now we're on Audi's autopilot. Still got to pay attention. Keep your hand on the wheel, of course. Interestingly, the car is predicting 166 miles on a full charge. That's just because we've been driving it incredibly hard on track. So that is one of the downsides of the guessometer. I bet we will get better performance than that says. And um, the last order of business before we can just sit back and cruise is we need to pull up our GPS app and confirm that this 70 miles per hour is a GPS accurate 70 miles per hour. The Germans especially are notorious for reading 
a little bit optimistic on their speedometers and uh, we just want to make sure this one's calibrated. And very nice Audi, they've calibrated their speedometer, so 70 miles per hour is true 70 miles per hour. And uh, can't complain at all, looks good. This is a comfortable car to do a range test in. This is certainly nicer than some of the other ones we have to test. This is a great drive. And we are just coming around to our turnaround point. We've used exactly 25% charge and we are at 51.8 miles. We might see over 200 miles on this e-tron. That would be cool. We're just gonna U-turn, go back the exact same route, come here and then go back to the charger. It might be almost perfectly uh, laid out with miles so that we arrive to the charger completely dead. And one point about that, a lot of EVs will drive a little bit past zero. Again, depending on if their BMS is calibrated or not not the e-tron the other day i did a zero to 100 percent charging test as we do with every ev and this thing died as soon as it hit zero miles i actually died making a u-turn to go back to the charger at the top of the hill let's just set cruise control here and right there it uh it it died i turned the car off let the pack voltage creep up just a little bit turned it on got a squirt of juice and just was able to scoot into the charger uh, with zero power left. So we know that when that says zero, it's truly zero. We have been cruising down the highway at uh, 70 miles per hour. Of course, it's been a great drive. We are almost back at our starting point. Of course, we went to the uh, down this road to the stoplight and then back. We are now almost back. We've done 96.5 miles. We're at 51%. We'll see what we're at at 50%, but this is going to be so close to 200 miles given this halfway estimate update. Um, this car is a weird software bug. It's going into Audi to get fixed. It's not representative of all e-trons, but the cruise control does just turn off sometimes. And of course, is the active cruise control does really good lane centering, just as good lane centering as autopilot on the highway as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but it is uh, just shuts off sometimes. So it's happened maybe two or three times this trip. I just kick it back on as soon as it turns off. Here we are at 50% state of charge. This is the only way you can see battery uh, percentage while driving. We've done 97.3 miles. So based off of this data, we are going to get very close to 200 miles, but maybe not exactly. Anyway, we're gonna go back to the exit where the charger is. Yeah, it just kicked off active cruise there. And then we are going to flip around, go back down the road this way. We probably won't have enough range to make it all the way to the light and back. So I'll stop a few exits early and then uh, we'll pick it up from there. But so far, this is a pretty riveting uh, range test. Temperatures are holding steady. I think when we set off, it was just about 70 degrees. Now we're down to 65, but not a huge difference in temperature variation, which is pretty nice. Yeah, 66 degrees right now. So all is good. We are now taking the exit where we're gonna loop back and head the other way. Let's hope we can catch this green light. No, we cannot. Uh, I try to avoid idle time on these range tests and I also try to avoid a ton of regen and a ton of hard power. We wanna minimize the amount of heat loss as much as possible, but sometimes there's only so much you can do. The nice thing is there's not another traffic light merging onto the highway, and this light always goes pretty quick. But so far, 103.2 miles was this stretch. Uh, back to here, we're at 47% battery, so my guess is we're going to see 190-ish miles, 195, something like that. Uh, keep in mind the last few miles we're going to try to burn off here on these back roads so we don't just run out on the highway. And that brings me to my next point, which is this becomes the hardest part of the leg right now is this particular stretch because we're gonna have to pick the exit that will get us back to here with the least amount of range possible without running out. And that's always a big compromise solution. Uh, of course, we, we, we should err on the side of caution always, which means we can make it back to this charging station with juice because uh, the other option is running out on the side of the road when this thing hits zero miles. We don't want to do that. But of course, for inside EVs, I don't think we've had any range test where we've run out yet, and we don't want to start now. We are always good at running them right down to zero as soon as we plug in. It is a unique skill that we have on our channel. <laughs> it doesn't really help you out in many situations except for this one. 
Now we just need this traffic to speed up to 70 miles per hour and we can lock in the speedo again. Here we go, 69 and 70, locked in. Great, time for another 80, 90 miles or so. One of the best parts about e-tron is this beautiful heads-up display. It'll give you a ton of information from your guidance systems to adaptive cruise control, speed limits, intersections as well. Uh, it's really an amazing setup. You have plenty of gauge designs, things you can move around. You can put the map inside the gauges here as well and make that full screen. Audi does a great job with infotainment. You have these screens down here. Once you figure it out, it's actually very intuitive and easy to use. Uh, it took me an hour to really figure everything out though, but I love just how much adjustability there is. One of the things that I have here in the navigation is I've programmed in the Sheets uh, Electrify America station where we've started, and I'm keeping an eye on that distance to empty, that number right there. I should say distance to our destination, 18 miles. And once that, that number sort of matches somewhere around our predicted range where it's just over, that's when I know I'm gonna take that exit, that next one, flip around, and head back to that station. Because again, there's a few exits in closer proximity to each other, closer to that charger. So even if we arrive with 20 miles of range, we can always zip around on those exits, making uh, loops around there. It's really important to do a loop style range test because it negates a lot of the wind and elevation differences that you can get on your route. We have decided to take this exit up here and uh, the Audi is slowing down automatically because it knows that we're taking that exit in the navigation. Just a cool feature that Audis have implemented. I don't have to touch the pedals. Um, the reason that we're taking this exit with only 35 miles back to the charger and we have 53 miles is the next exit up is 11 miles ahead. And that would put us over what the guessometer assumes we'll get back with. So what we're gonna do is go back and go past the charger in the other direction and uh, make a loop around that way. And that's why you gotta pay attention on these range tests because occasionally there is a big gap from exit to exit and that can be the difference between making it and not making it. So let's flip around, go back on the other way. And uh, yeah, it's nice. There's almost no one out here, just a handful of cars and that's it. Just got our first warning that said, please charge battery with 31 miles remaining on the guessometer. Uh, which is our predictive range calculation, of course. Just a fun term that, that I like to use, along with Bjorn, the GOM. And then we have our uh, battery uh, light that's come on down there. When we start getting lower, it will progressively limit our power output. So this will back off from 100 to 75% to 50. Once we get to 25%, it will hold there for a little while, but that is when we wanna plug in because uh, again, I just ran this car down to zero and when this thing hits dead, um, it shuts off. So we've gotta be really mindful of that power ramp down meter. Uh, because uh, when it says 25%, it means we need to plug in immediately. Uh, it, this battery icon will also rotate with a turtle icon. So all things to keep our eye on as we run down to the bottom of the battery pack. I like this feature on the e-tron where it will help you find parking garages and parallel parking spaces when you get close to your destination. It's really a cool, helpful tool actually. I've been able to use it, it's been pretty nice down to 11% state of charge. We've just driven past the exit for the charger. We'll probably go up one or two and plug in at 0%. And the car just beeped away. We just popped into turtle mode. We can see this power percentage starting to back off slowly. 100, we're down to 90% now, and it's progressively decreasing in the available power output. Uh, it drops very quickly all the way down to 25% where it sits on a ledge. The car is predicting eight miles left on the guessometer. We've done 181.1 miles. Alyssa, would you be so kind as to pull up the charging screen on the navigation system, please? Click home, vehicle, and then charging info vehicle and then charging and efficiency and charging to a few menus deep and we are at three percent so that's when turtle mode kicks on in the Audi e-tron we are almost down to 75 percent power limitation 
we are going to get off in two miles at our next exit. We won't be able to get past. The next exit is, of course, the charging station. So we've eked out everything we could on the highway. And um, then we are going to drive over on those local roads and uh, run it all the way down to zero. But the highway miles portion of everything we've been able to accomplish uh, is about 183.5 miles by the time we get off. So that is not bad. And then we'll see what we get when we run it down to zero. Same with every range test. We are down to 2% is predicting five miles on the guessimeter, which I find interesting because that would indicate we could have gone more than 200 miles on this charge, which is obviously not the case, but we'll see. We're going to run it down until it won't go anymore. So we have just over a 50% power limitation. I'm very gentle on the power. We don't want to pull all that voltage out of the pack while it's low. And uh, we are going to get up and over this hill and try and stay on the high side so we can coast down into the charger if needed but this is pretty exciting i always love these last few miles trying to eke everything we can we have 183.8 miles driven so far we can see the nice green glow of the electrify america signet chargers over there in the distance and now it's time to run it down to zero well, we are just driving around in circles. I have a nice little only right turn so I can keep the car moving path where we do about 35, 40 miles per hour average. Um, otherwise, when we're at the track, I just drive around the track, but this is about the same. If we run out here, we're not impacting anyone's life. This is just a college campus and uh, we're just blowing through all these nice roundabouts. And there is one big speed bump we're gonna slow for. That's the only, yeah, it's a big bump. That's the only obstacle really on <laughs> this one, but the e-tron soaks it up nicely. Although in efficiency mode, the e-tron lowers itself all the way down and it rides firmer than it does in comfort with a little bit more suspension travel. But yeah, we're just gonna keep making these right turns, stay above the chargers up here on the uphill. So if we run out, we can coast down like I did the other day. We are down to 1% and we have a 25% power limit. Uh, however, we still have four miles predicted on the guessometer and there's no way we're gonna keep, you know, plug in with four miles remaining. We're running this thing down to zero. Okay, this is the last turn. We're gonna go plug in. We're at one mile of range remaining at 0% battery charge. And uh, that usually just means it's gonna about to shut off, so. It's about time to go plug into this Electrify America station right over here and uh, see how see how the final results look. Let's, uh, let's pull in, come to a stop, because again, once this thing hits zero miles, it will shut off. We are at one zero, you know, total power limit right now, and I can just feel it's ready to dip to zero and shut down. So let's get us right to a charger and we've eked out pretty much everything we're going to out of this car. You know, if, I, if we were at 189 point something miles, we were ready to dip over to 190, I'd say let's maybe push for one more loop. But we're at 188.4, took us three hours to do the test, and uh, 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour. That was pretty much since we got on the highway to now our efficiency was that progressive. And um, pretty nice showing from the e-tron, I would say, it's EPA 204, this did 188.4, that's not a huge difference. Uh, I would love to test one on the aero wheels though because I bet we could get another 10 or 15 miles out of it. Thanks so much for watching. As always, subscribe to the Inside EVs US YouTube channel. We do tons of these electric car tests with every car that's in uh, that has a plug on it in the market. So stay tuned for more, subscribe, and we will see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Thank you.